Hi, we're speaking with Justin Hayward of the Moody Blues. Hey, Justin, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day. Are you uh, in the States right now, or are you out in Europe at this point? No, we're, we're, I'm, in, I'm in the States. I'm in Nashville now, and then going to um, Birmingham, Alabama tomorrow. And then yes. you're going to be here at the Rialto Theater in Tucson on Wednesday, May 18th. And a couple of weeks ago, I had the pleasure of doing an interview with your guitar player, Mike. What a player. So uh, tell me a little bit about your, your doing. Is this an acoustic show that you're doing of Moody Blues songs and your solo stuff and, uh, and some other stuff? What is the, um, the spirit of this solo show? Well, so it's, a, it's, a, it's acoustic electric and with four of us on stage, Julie Reagan's on keyboards and vocals and um, who has been with the Moody Blues for a long time, the finest female Moody Blue there ever was and um, Carmen Gould on flute and vocals. So the, there's, there's four of us. It's, sometimes we're acoustic, sometimes we're electric. But we're more in the spirit of how the songs were written and um, what the, the circumstances around me writing the songs and the times. And uh, yes, it, it's presented in that format. So I wouldn't say it was t- totally acoustic, but it's a, a definitely a quieter format than you would get from uh, most groups. And... Um, it's a it's a warmer way of doing it. I like it very much. It's it suits me, and this is the way I want to move forward now. Yeah, I think actually it's more representative of the records that often had the acoustic guitar further forward. Is this? Are you also talking a little bit about the song before you go into them or after you play them? Are you giving a little bit of a kind of a behind the music vibe with it too? Yes, exactly. Yes, that, that's that's how it is, and. Um, the stories behind them and about the times as well when uh, when they were written and what was happening in my life and uh, if it's a Moody's song then uh, about the Moody's and uh, um, yes it's it's not always the same every night but but um, I, I I certainly you know there's there's enough material to draw from and that's the wonderful thing about the um, the Moody's catalog and stuff that I've written for the Moody's and for the solo things as well. I get to do Forever Autumn as well, which um, uh, which is always a pleasure. Mm-hmm. Well, with your catalog of solo and with the stuff with the Moody Blues, how do you pick the songs? You know, you, you have such a vast catalog, and you play, I presume, you know, anywhere between 90 minutes to two hours, or, or, or you know, how, how do yeah. you decide what goes in your set with everything that you've written? Well, I think that they kind of choose themselves. Some things work in this format and other things kind of need to be loud. But I found that over the years what I've done is is kind of rediscover things that, I, that I've written. And then I've only really experienced them for three or four days in the recording studio. And then we moved on and never really did them live. And so some things lend themselves to this kind of material and it's this kind of format. And uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure for us to explore those songs as well. And, um, yes, that, that, that it, it's, I suppose over, when I look back at sort of parts, past set lists, I see that we've done so, so many songs. So we're always moving on and changing things, which is, re- which is really nice. There's some things that, of course, I have to do, I couldn't get off stage without doing. Sure. So um, I'm happy to do those as well. Yeah, the, some of the big hits. You know, what's interesting is you know you, uh, sometimes people don't realize that musicians, like you just explained, sometimes when you're putting an album together, you're in the studio, you spend like what you said three or four days together putting the song together, and then the song kind of just disappears for a while, and then over. Do you do you go back to those old records the the, the and find songs and go, wow, um, why didn't we do this live in the past? Do you ever do you ever do <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, that's right. Um, well, you know, that you, every tour, I suppose, you, you get drawn into doing things that were just released as singles, which is fine. And um, But that, that means that you kind of leave a lot of songs um, by the wayside along on, on that road, if you just follow that route. And that's what's been interesting, picking songs that have been popular, you, you know, but, but not particularly released as singles. And um, I'm happy to do the singles as well, but um, that it, it's yes, it's a, it's a pleasure looking back at those records. And, and like you said, and 
we said earlier, you know, I, I only got to really concentrate on them for three or four days while they were happening and being mixed, and I was recording them. Sometimes I made a demo, and um, they're, they're always interesting to look back on. But um, it's it's a real pleasure discovering my own material here, in a way. You know, I've often read interviews sometimes with actors and stuff like that where you're surprised that they sometimes have never seen their own movie, you know, they, they, they or they've seen it once at the premiere and then never uh, watched it over again. And, and where in my life, music is something I can keep going to back and forth. And as I get older, sometimes a song will mean something different when I'm a teenager and something different as a man in my 50s. Um, mm-hmm. Do you go back and, right. and go to your old records and sometimes... For a tour like this, do you, do you ever rework them a little bit because maybe lyrically you're you're in a different place? I I go back not not lyrically so much, um, but I do go back to uh, how I wrote them and how, how they were conceived in the first place, mm-hmm. and that's what I try to bring out. I, I do remember that. So this it, finding these these songs again and discovering them really does take me back to that place. And I, and I, I feel that I'm rediscovering the events around these songs and where I was, you know, music, as you know, is such a wonderful thing for, um, to put you back in a place or, um, it's, it's the most wonderful of, of all the arts and the most uh, mystic somehow and mysterious. So um, it, it, it's a real joy to, to do that, yeah. As a fan of music, I, I've always felt that, especially as I've gotten older, songs do bring me back in time or, or bring me back to a feeling or even a smell you know, or something like that. I've often wondered what it would be like to be the actual musician who creates it. Does it bring you back to when you first came up with the hook or the, the line or the lyric or something like that? It certainly takes me back to the place, the night, the, and the events that around a song. Oh, wow. And uh, that's something that you kind of, um, yes, yeah, so, so it brings those moments to life again and those feelings and, um, and, and, and people as well around it. It, it draws everything in. It's a, it's a wonderful way of, um, of having a recall of, of things. You know, I, I can, I, I, I think... Books. Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a great reader, but but I I find that after maybe ten or fifteen years, I've forgotten the book, and I can reread it again, and just be maybe I'll remember little bits of it. Mm-hmm. But I I think we both know, Larry, that a piece of music, you know, it kind of never leaves us, and it's not that we've forgotten it; we just are able to live it again, remembering it, and uh, it's a curious thing. So um, ever, ever since I was a child, there's, it's been like that for me. And I'm sure it is for most, uh, for you and for most people who love this business and music. Well, I think, too, one of the things that, you know, I, uh, when I was younger, I could put on the same song and hit repeat over and over and over and over and over again. Oh, yeah. And then as I get older yeah. now, I'll hear a song I haven't heard in years. And it does bring me back uh, to something uh, mm-hmm. in, in my life. And, and that's... I find it uh, fascinating that it also does that for the creator of the music as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a wonderful thing and um, mysterious thing, and, and I can't imagine a life without music, and uh, that would be unthinkable. And ev- every day it's around me, and um, which which is something I'm very thankful for. Now, besides, obviously, your vast catalog of solo and, and the stuff with the Moody Blues and everything else you've been involved with, uh, are you still like, you know, a lot of people, you know, we took this 18, 19, 20 months off of because of the worldwide pandemic. Did you find that that uh, maybe uh, reconnected you to music to create or uh, were you always in that mode or, you know, what did you do to keep busy during that? Because now you're back on the road again and you're entertaining people all over the world. Um, is there any new music coming from you in the future? Yes, I, I, during the last couple of years, I've been very lucky enough to 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 be able to go to the studio with my um, to to where my partner, um, musical partner and producer Alberto Parodi lives in Italy, and and I spent a lot of time there. We were able to make um, quite a few videos for put them up on the Facebook channel on, on my own. 
um, site, and uh, that w- that was a joy too. And so, and then I did become quite productive, and I have some new material out this summer, which um, I'm looking forward to um, to going, you know, to bringing the whole circus to it as well, um, as well as enjoying it just, uh, uh, you know, for it for its own sake. Yes. Yeah, so, in some ways, I I was blessed because I was still able to work and go to the studio, which was wonderful for me. So you're going to be here in Tucson at the Rialto Theater on Wednesday, May 18th, and I understand that Mike Dawes will be opening up for you, but then he's also your guitar player in the band. Uh, how long approximately are you on stage uh, when you got when you hit your, with your solo show? Oh, maybe 90 minutes, maybe 95, about hour 40, and um, I'm looking to it forward to it very much. I, I, I you know, I, I've looked at the Rialto. I'm not sure whether I've played there before, but... Um, it looks like a lovely place, and the and the the kind of place. I know it's going to be comfortable and it is. Um, and, and and pleasant. Yes. Yeah. When when did I you? I assume hit- it was an old movie theater. I don't know. Yeah. At, it, at one time, it's been around forever. It's uh, it's definitely a historical building here in Tucson as well. So it, I, I, yeah. be- I believe it's even older than a movie theater. Um, so. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So uh, one last thing before I let you go, because I know you're busy, yeah. is um, when you, what was it like for you to get back on stage after a couple of years? Was it a good feeling to connect with the audience live again? Excellent. Really excellent. We were lucky enough. I mean, I, like everyone, I had my tours postponed maybe four or five times. And, um, but we were able to be out at the beginning of September last year. And um, I, I was very lucky with that. I think it, the, the, the promoters had just kept the dates in the book. And um, we were maybe some of the first people out. And uh, it, was a, it was a real joy. And to be with my crew again. And, uh, you know, of course, as, as musicians, we, we love all, all of that stuff. And the, the, the traveling and, uh, you know, I've, it's always been part of my life and that gypsy life. Mm-hmm. Is, um, will always be with me. So one, one last question uh, for people who want to follow you. I, I presume you have a website and uh, social media yes. pages. You mentioned the Facebook page briefly. Yes, a Facebook page. And, um, and, and of course, my own, uh, uh, there's a YouTube channel. Just look for me and spell my name kind of right, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you'll get there. Yes, and to my own website, of course, yes. And would that be, is that justinhayward.com? Yes, exactly, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Well, Justin, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I'm looking forward to seeing you here, in, I think, in a little over than a week from now on Wednesday, May 18th at the Rialto Theater here in Tucson. Any last thing you want to leave uh, to our Tucson audience before we uh, move on? It's always been a pleasure and a joy to be in that part of the world, and um and I'm looking forward to it very much. And my my, my engineer, uh, my Alberto, uh, you know, he was, he was Italian, said to me, "Oh, you're playing Tucson." I said, oh, <laughs> "Yeah, that's right. I am. Yes, I, I didn't bother to correct him." So, uh, <laughs> there you go. so I I do look forward to being there. Well, Justin, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank Thank you, Larry. It's my my pleasure. Don't forget Justin Hayward at the Rialto Theater on Wednesday, May 18th. Get all the details online on our website at klpx.com. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.